Okay, hi there. Welcome to another in our series of, of topic videos. We take a, a topic, in this case it's supply side policies, and we throw six past multiple choice questions at you. These are all taken from past exams. Great chance to, to test and check your understanding. For each question, press the pause button when you uh, want to have a, a think, and then just press play, and we'll work through the answer and the explanations together. So here we go. Here's the first of our six questions. I like this one. Which is likely to hinder, hold back, a supply side stimulus to the economy? Which of the following is likely to hinder or hold back supply side stimulus to the economy? Take a moment, please, to have a go at question number one. So, of course, the aim of supply side policies is to try to improve a country's uh, productive potential, improve their competitiveness, uh, increase both the quantity and the quality of factors of production. Which of these is likely to hold that back? My instinct is that the right answer is probably A, an imposition of maximum hours in a working week, uh, holding back, for example, uh, the, the average number of hours that uh, people are expected or required to work, effectively limits the active labour supply measured by the total number of hours worked. Public spending can actually uh, can actually complement supply side policies, particularly spending on infrastructure, spending on new training schemes, obviously adds to the stock of uh, human capital, and opening up uh, the economy to raw materials, relaxing import controls such as tariffs and quotas can increase aggregate supply because cheaper raw materials can come into the economy. Here's question two, which of the following, which one of the following, sorry, is an example of a market based supply side policy. So each of these are supply side policies, but which of them would be categorized probably as a market based supply side policy? Take a moment, please. Press the pause button. Have a go at question number two. Now, there's a, there's a degree of, uh, of discussion about this, I guess. So market based policies are essentially those that try to increase the role and importance of free market forces in the allocation of scarce resources. And typically that involves governments looking to try to improve incentives, reduce state level of spending and taxation. Uh, the correct answer to question two is B, a reduction in unemployment benefits. Construction of transportation links, essentially government intervention, particularly if it's publicly provided infrastructure, government funded apprenticeship schemes is state led investment. Likewise, increased spending on public health care, on health care services. A reduction in unemployment benefits, I don't think it's a great question, but, but it's the right answer in the sense that the government is reducing the out of work income that the state provides through the welfare system. And in, in theory, that's designed to improve incentives for people to look for work. So the answer is B, although I'm sure you can think of good reasons why that might not be necessarily very effective. Uh, question three is interesting. Uh, a government reduces its spending on workplace training, increases the level of indirect taxes, and reduces the, the interest rate paid on government debt. Uh, how would these government macro policies be categorised? Supply side, fiscal and monetary, there are your options A, B, C and D, expansionary and contractionary. Have a go please at question three. So this is an interesting question. Well, the government's reducing its own spending on workplace training. So in that sense, it's a contractionary supply side policy. Although why it would do that is open to open to debate, of course. Maybe they want the private sector to uh, to provide more spending on training and be and uh, be less of a free rider. Uh, cutting uh, increasing indirect taxes as a contractionary fiscal policy. So in which case uh, it must be a. I'm assuming it is a. It must be a. Indeed, lower interest paid on government debt. Uh, for example, the central bank buying. Uh, government existing bonds driving the price of bonds up and bringing down the yield on debt would be an expansionary monetary policy. So the answer there is A. Okay, we are halfway through this little video. Hope you're doing well. Here's question four. The economy's stock of knowledge, work skills and employment experiences collectively is referred to as what? Take a moment please to answer question number four. And the answer here is B, the human capital stock. Human capital is one of those supply side concepts that it's definitely worth knowing something about. 
it's essentially the aggregation of the quantity, but the quality of the labour force, the experiences they have, the flexibility of their skills, what their skill sets are, their experience in the workplace. It's the human capital stock, in other words, people, which is often the key driver of things like innovation and productivity. So the answer is B. Two to go. Which of the statements below, A, B, C and D, best describes interventionist supply-side policies? Now, there's quite a bit to read here, so do please press that pause button. Give yourself a few moments and have a go, please, at question number five. So which of the statements below best describes interventionist supply-side policies? Uh, all of them hinting at some kind of intervention here. You're looking for the broadest answer, really, and the answer here is A, policies by the government to tackle market imperfections in the economy. Oftentimes, uh, the supply side of a country can be um, caused by multiple market failures, market imperfections, including Im immobility of labour, unaffordable housing, lots of things. So that would be interventionist. Policies aimed at improving mobility of labour, yes. Policies aimed at reducing structural unemployment, yes. Uh, but they're not general enough, OK? They're, they're quite specific. D, of course, is, is the, uh, the reverse of interventionist. It's a free market approach. So I think A is the best answer. And it is the answer. And here's our last question. Which of the following could result from a series of successful supply-side policies aimed at labour markets? Interesting question. So uh, things like improved training, improved incentives to find work, better information about job opportunities, improved geographical mobility of labour. Which of the following could result from a series of successful supply side policies aimed at labour markets? Have a go, please, at the last question, number six. The correct answer here, I and mean, there's some plausible answers, the right answer is D, a reduction in the natural rate of unemployment. Targeting in particular supply-side policies designed to bring down structural and frictional unemployment in the labour market. That's one of the key aims there. And if you can do that, you can, uh, you can bring down the natural rate of unemployment or the so-called equilibrium rate of unemployment. And the key really is often to give the workers the skills they need and also to make the labour market flexible in response to changing economic circumstances. Well, there we go. There were six past questions on supply side policies. Hopefully you did well and uh, good luck as you prepare for your assignments and exams. Take care, stay safe and see you soon.